So, so the idea for the, the South Pole um, expedition really was born many, many years ago, reading you know, stories of Shackleton and, and Captain Scott, and kind of that being a world that I wished one day I would, would explore and go to, but never really believing that it would happen. And then, you know, fast forward in life, I've had my accident, I've become someone who's known as having a disability and doing adventures. So the way that the expedition will look on a day-to-day -day basis is probably very Groundhog Day. Every day is going to look the same, except for that we'll be a little bit closer to the pole. So we're going to be skiing for 11 to 12 hours a day, pulling all of our kit and equipment behind us that will probably weigh upwards of 80 kilos per person. Um, the reward for finishing 11 hours of skiing in minus 20 or minus 30 um, is to set up the tent, set up camp, to start the process of readying yourself for the next day, rehydrating, re-energizing, melting snow for water, which is the only way we're gonna have water. That will come from digging snow and melting it. And administration process is kind of right up until you go to sleep, wake up early, do the reverse, collapse the tent, get going, and then you repeat and you repeat and you repeat. I kind of was given the opportunity to, to come up with the idea, to come up with a distance that would be groundbreaking for somebody with a spinal cord injury, that would be groundbreaking for somebody that has to use a sit-ski, that can't traditionally ski. Um, and at the time, the, the furthest distance that had been done was 111 kilometres, which is the last degree. And I'm not one for just trying to get a record for a record's sake, but I'm definitely someone who is passionate about showing what is possible and, and pushing the line even further. So that's where three degrees came from. The biggest challenge for, for me in particular, so as somebody with a spinal cord injury, is there are a lot of unanswered questions and there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of how the body will react. Um, you know, had this been done before, there would be a blueprint, there would be a rule book that we can follow and an indication as to how in sub-zero temperatures not being able to feel or move beneath your chest, which is the case for me, so I'm a T6 paraplegic, um, how that's going to impact how I feel on a day-to-day -day basis. Obviously, I'm relying entirely on my shoulders and my arms to do the hard work, um, but there's the risk of frostbite. There's a risk of cold weather injuries that I may not know I'm developing because of my impaired sense of um, the feeling. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that we can't answer until we get there. The thing I always think about is the mission of Wings for Life is to give someone the opportunity to have gone through that life-changing moment and to go back to their old life. You know, I would be lying if I said that I didn't want to just go back to the guy I was and go back to climbing mountains, but I couldn't. So I had to learn to accept that. But the research that Wings for Life is carrying out means that maybe in five years or ten years, a future version of me or of anybody else that we know might go into hospital, go through a procedure purely because of the research Wings for Life has done today and tomorrow, 
um, and they get back to go back to the life that they had. They don't have to adjust. They don't have to rediscover who they are because, you know, that is science and that is kind of, you know, hopefully where we're going. What Darren is doing is out of the ordinary and I think it would be something that any kind of able-bodied person would struggle with. It's a significant challenge but for Darren to do that as a wheelchair user just represents so much hope. Um, so the fact that he's doing it, he's showing that you can go beyond your boundaries and that anything is possible with a spinal cord injury. And not only that, but the money he's raising, it offers significant hope for those in the community who are hoping and looking for a cure. Are you guys going to stick around and film some like, extra stuff or are you going to run up having you? We've made more progress in the last five years than we have in the previous 25 and Wings for Life has been responsible for funding the most cutting edge research projects and clinical trials and we're now seeing individuals regaining functionality and in some cases walking again. So we're on the right path and it's not going to be too long. It's not just about inspiring people with spinal cord injuries. It is about inspiring anybody that the tough moments in life don't define who we are and the tough moments in life don't define where we go. It's kind of that sense of uh, resilience and mental toughness. I know that's a bit cliche now, but it's true. In those difficult moments, the thing that matters most is taking ownership of, of where you go now.